Attorney from Idaho Senate, I'd like to welcome Scott Herndon. Howdy. Hey, I've got a song too. Let's do it. I didn't know Scott was going to do this and you're going to get a song from me. Steve runs such a tight ship here. I've got five minutes and as I came in, I've got five minutes to tell me what I needed to hear. You know that song, that country song, you've got five minutes. I looked it up. I'm like, to show me that you're really sincere, that's not much time to change my mind. It'll take a miracle, no doubt. Now you got five minutes to figure it out, okay? But you know what? It doesn't take much time to talk about the race on that. Today, at the Senate floor, the override of the governor's veto on Senate Bill 1381 failed. And there were 21 senators who voted to try the override. Last week, when they passed this bill that was going to protect you, against COVID vaccine mandates, it's not a vaccine, but putting that aside, our senator voted against the bill. He did not want to protect you from vaccine mandates. How many of you are receiving my mailers? Okay, that's good. So on my mailer, I've got liberal Jim on one side and I've got constitutional Scott on the other side. And that's really what this election is about. By the way, I'm the Bonner County Republicans chairman right now, so that tells you a little bit about who I am. I've actually run legislation. That lady right there, Priscilla Giddings, who's running for lieutenant governor, I've had two of my bills signed into law that she carried for me, and it was her who was in One was actually a parental rights bill, so if you want to know about someone else who cares about parental rights, she's right there. So on our mailers, we've been putting some things about Jim's voting record. This is a great election. It's a Republican primary, but I'm basically voting or running against someone, and you get a choice to vote between a conservative Republican and someone who frequently votes with the Democrats. Now, I personally don't call people rhinos. I just say look at their voting record. When you vote last year, he voted to continue the emergency powers of the governor. Okay, that's the real vote. You can check my website for which one it was. This is the vote that there was the flip-flop five over in the Senate. We could have ended the state of emergency. Let me tell you why this is important. It's because of what Scott was just talking about, about the national debt. Thirty trillion dollars. I run a home building business. Right now we're facing massive inflation and six-month delays on product. It's impossible to run my business right now. Why are we facing that? Because the federal government has created money out of nothing, we'll call it national debt, they've injected it into the economy under the guise of the state of emergency, and guess what's gonna happen? We're gonna have to raise interest rates to basically quell inflation, and then what's that gonna do? Consume more federal budget. But what else is happening is the federal government is doing a lot of things in Idaho that it is not constitutionally authorized to do. And so what do you need from a senator in the legislature? Someone who understands the role of a state legislature. It is to be a check and balance to federal power overreach. It is also to be a check and balance to the executive branch in this state, the governor. He's not, the Senate is not supposed to be the governor's rubber stamp. But our current senator often votes as the governor's rubber stamp. And that's got to stop, and that's your choice in this election. Let's look at a few more bills that Senator Woodward voted for. Last year, he voted to give $6 million grant to an organization that was going to teach critical race theory in the schools. Three years in a row, Laura B. Hart ran a bill, and this was about parental rights over their children and authority in education. And the bill was designed to stop the teaching of gender identity in the schools to stop homosexuality teaching and have parents have more authority over whether, whether their children learn that. It passed the House overwhelmingly by the Republicans and the Senate Education Committee with Senator Jim Woodward killed the bill three years in a row. Did you see that guy that they call him Leah Thomas and he just beat some women in swimming? Okay, we were the first state in 2020 to pass the Fairness and Women's Sports Act.
that says boys cannot compete against girls in girls' sports. Seems reasonable. Who's in favor of that? No boys in girls' sports. All of the Republicans were in favor of that. Even Brad Little was in favor of that, but Senator Jim Woodward voted against it. Apparently, he wanted boys and girls sports. So vote Scott Herndon in this May election, and you will get a conservative in the Senate, and it will matter. Thank you very much.